How billions of concrete blocks are made inside massive production lines. Right now, somewhere in the world, a concrete block manufacturing plant is producing 20,000 blocks per hour. These blocks will become the walls of hospitals, schools, homes, and office buildings. They'll support roofs, withstand hurricanes, and last for decades with zero maintenance. And most people have no idea how they're made. They think concrete blocks are poured into molds and left to dry like baking cookies. They assume it's a simple low-tech process unchanged for centuries. But modern concrete block manufacturing is an engineering marvel combining precise chemistry, extreme pressure, automated robotics, and quality control so rigorous that a single bad block in 10,000 triggers production shutdowns. The global concrete block industry produces over 12 billion blocks annually, requiring raw material precision, measured in grams, curing processes lasting weeks, and production lines that never stop moving. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how raw materials become concrete blocks, why the process requires such extreme precision, what happens inside those massive automated production lines, and why a product that seems simple is actually the result of sophisticated industrial engineering. Quick question, have you ever wondered how construction materials are actually manufactured? Drop yes or no in the comments. Let's start with what concrete blocks actually are, because understanding the product explains why the manufacturing process is so complex. A standard concrete block, officially called a concrete masonry unit, or CMU, measures 8 inches high, 16 inches long, and typically 8 inches wide. The block weighs approximately 38 pounds. It's not solid concrete. Modern blocks are hollow, with two or three vertical cores running through the center. These cores reduce weight, improve insulation, allow space for reinforcing steel rebar, and enable running electrical conduit or plumbing through walls. The block must meet strict standards for compressive strength, typically 1,800 pounds per square inch minimum, meaning the block can support massive weight without crushing. It must have precise dimensions within 1 8 inch tolerance, consistent density throughout, and uniform color without visible defects. Here's why precision matters so much. Construction workers stack these blocks into walls often 20 feet high or more. If blocks vary in height by even a quarter inch, the accumulated error over dozens of courses creates walls that are uneven, structurally compromised, and visually unacceptable. If strength varies between blocks, weak blocks become failure points where walls crack under load. If dimensions aren't consistent, mortar joints become irregular, weakening bond strength and creating water infiltration paths. So every block must be virtually identical to every other block in dimensions, strength, density, and appearance. Achieving this consistency while producing 20,000 blocks per hour requires sophisticated process control. The manufacturing process begins with raw materials, and the recipe matters more than most people realize. A standard concrete block consists of approximately 40% cement, 45% aggregate, crushed stone and sand, 10% water, and 5% additives. But these percentages must be precise within 1%. Too much water weakens the block. Too little water prevents proper chemical reaction. Wrong aggregate size creates density variations. Insufficient cement reduces strength. Modern plants use computerized batching systems that weigh each ingredient to within grams before mixing begins. The cement comes from silos holding hundreds of tons. The aggregate comes from storage bins sorted by size. Water is metered through flow sensors. Additives include plasticizers that improve workability, accelerators that speed curing, and pigments for colored blocks. The mixing process happens in massive paddle mixers, holding several cubic yards of material. The mixer runs for approximately three to five minutes, blending ingredients into homogeneous concrete. The consistency must be perfect, dry enough to hold shape when molded, but wet enough to achieve proper density when compressed. This consistency is called zero slump concrete because it contains far less water than poured concrete. If you formed a pile of this concrete mix, it would hold its shape rather than slumping flat. This low water content is critical because blocks must retain their shape immediately after molding without collapsing. Yet the mix must still achieve full strength 
through chemical curing over time. What aspect of manufacturing processes fascinates you most? The machinery, the precision, or the scale? Comment below. Once mixed, the concrete moves to the block machine, the heart of the production line. Modern block machines are engineering marvels weighing 50 tons or more and standing two stories tall. The machine consists of a steel mold box with cavities shaped exactly like the blocks being produced. A standard machine might have 6 to 12 cavities, meaning it produces 6 to 12 blocks simultaneously with each cycle. The cycle time is approximately 6 to 8 seconds, allowing production of 5,000 to 10,000 blocks per hour from a single machine. Large plants run multiple machines simultaneously to reach 20,000 blocks per hour or more. Here's how the block machine actually works. The mold box sits on a steel pallet. Concrete is fed into the mold cavities from above through a hopper system. The concrete fills the cavities, but isn't yet compressed. Then the critical moment happens. A hydraulic press rams down from above with tremendous force, typically 40 to 60 tons of pressure, while simultaneously the pallet vibrates at high frequency. This combination of pressure and vibration compacts the concrete to approximately 60% of its original volume, forcing out air pockets and packing particles tightly together. The vibration allows particles to settle into optimal density while the pressure ensures uniform compaction throughout the block. This process takes only 2-3 to three seconds, but determines the block's final strength and quality. After compression, the press lifts, the mold box rises, and the blocks remain standing on the pallet. This is remarkable. The blocks have just been formed seconds ago from loose concrete, yet they're strong enough to stand unsupported. This immediate strength comes from the extreme compaction and near zero water content. The blocks aren't hardened through chemical curing yet. That takes weeks, but they're dense enough and dry enough to hold shape under their own weight. The pallet with its 12 blocks then moves out of the machine on a conveyor system, and a new empty pallet moves in for the next cycle. This happens every six to eight seconds, continuously 24 hours per day in many facilities. The pallets move through what's called the curing area, and this is where time becomes the critical factor. Freshly molded blocks have achieved their shape and initial strength, but they haven't achieved their final compressive strength. Concrete strength develops through a chemical reaction between cement and water, called hydration. This reaction happens over days and weeks, not hours. During the first 24 hours, blocks develop approximately 50% of their eventual strength. Over the next six days, they reach approximately 85% strength. Full rated strength typically requires 28 days of curing under proper conditions. Modern plants use three different curing methods depending on production volume and schedule requirements. The simplest method is air curing. Pallets sit in the production facility for 24 to 48 hours before blocks are removed from pallets and stacked in a curing yard where they sit for additional weeks developing full strength. This method requires enormous floor space to store thousands of pallets but needs no special equipment. Medium volume plants use low pressure steam curing. Pallets move into chambers where warm, humid air at 140 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Degrees Fahrenheit accelerates the curing reaction. Blocks achieve handling strength in 8 to 12 hours instead of 24, allowing faster pallet turnover. High volume plants use high pressure steam curing called autoclaving. Blocks are subjected to steam at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and 1 150 PSI pressure for 10 to 12 hours. This accelerates curing dramatically, allowing blocks to achieve near final strength in one day instead of weeks. The pallet handling system in modern plants is where automation becomes impressive. A single plant might have 5,000 to 10,000 pallets circulating through the system. After blocks are molded, the pallet moves automatically on conveyors or robotic shuttles to the curing area. After curing time completes, the pallet automatically returns to a cuber station where a robotic arm removes blocks from the pallet and stacks them into packages, typically 90 blocks per pallet in precise arrangements. Shrink wrap or metal banding secures the package. The empty pallet returns to the block machine for another cycle. All of this happens with minimal human intervention. 
Operators monitor computer screens, showing pallet locations, machine status, and production rates. Problems trigger automatic alarms and shutdowns. Quality control happens at multiple stages and is more rigorous than most people imagine. First, raw material testing. Cement is tested for chemical composition and strength characteristics. Aggregate is tested for gradation, the distribution of particle sizes, and moisture content. Water is tested for contaminants that might interfere with cement hydration. Second, mixed design verification. Periodic samples of mixed concrete are tested for consistency and workability. Third, block testing. Randomly selected blocks from each production run undergo compression testing. A specialized machine crushes the block while measuring the force required. If the block fails to meet minimum strength standards, the entire production batch is rejected. Fourth, dimensional inspection. Automated sensors measure block dimensions during production. Blocks outside tolerance limits are automatically rejected and removed from the line. The reject rate in well-run modern plants is approximately 1 to 3%, meaning 97 to 99% of blocks meet all specifications. Rejected blocks are crushed and recycled back into the aggregate stream, wasting nothing. This low reject rate is achieved through constant monitoring and adjustment. If compression test results show strength declining, operators adjust water content or cement ratio in the next batches. If dimensional sensors detect size variations, machine settings are adjusted. The goal is maintaining consistent output rather than catching and discarding defective products. Let's talk about the scale of these operations because the numbers are staggering. A medium-sized concrete block plant produces approximately 40 million blocks per year. This requires roughly 40,000 tons of cement, 80,000 tons of aggregate, and 4 million gallons of water annually. The plant consumes enough electricity to power 1,500 homes, mostly running the block machines, air compressors, conveyors, and curing chambers. Natural gas or oil fuels the steam generation for curing. The plant operates two shifts per day, six days per week, employing 30 to 50 workers. Despite the massive output, most of the operation is automated. Human workers primarily monitor equipment, perform quality testing, load raw materials, and handle maintenance. The economics of concrete block manufacturing explain why plants must run at such high volumes. The capital investment for a modern automated plant ranges from five to $15 million for equipment and facility. Fixed costs, including labor, utilities, maintenance, and debt service are substantial, regardless of production volume. The raw material cost per block is approximately 50 cents. The selling price to contractors and building suppliers is approximately $1.50 per block. This means each block generates $1 of gross profit, but that dollar must cover all fixed costs. A plant producing 40 million blocks annually generates $40 million gross profit, which sounds substantial until you subtract the fixed costs of running a facility with million-dollar machines and skilled labor. Profitability requires running at near full capacity continuously. This economic reality drives the industry toward consolidation and automation. Small plants producing a few million blocks per year struggle to compete. Large regional plants producing 50 to 100 million blocks annually achieve economies of scale that allow competitive pricing while maintaining profitability. Automation reduces labor costs and improves consistency but it requires enormous capital investment that only high volume operations can justify. The result is an industry dominated by large producers with sophisticated facilities rather than small local operations with manual processes. Environmental considerations are increasingly important in concrete block manufacturing. Cement production is energy intensive and produces significant carbon dioxide emissions. Many plants now use supplementary cementitious materials like fly ash, a waste product from coal power plants, or ground blast furnace slag from steel production to partially replace cement. These materials react similarly to cement in concrete, but require less energy to produce and divert waste from landfills. Some plants capture and recycle water from curing processes, reducing consumption, 
Crushed, rejected blocks are recycled into aggregate rather than going to landfills. Solar panels are appearing on plant roofs to offset electricity consumption. Innovation in block manufacturing focuses on improving energy efficiency, reducing material waste, and enhancing block performance. New mix designs achieve higher strength with less cement. Advanced additives improve workability while reducing water content. Automated systems optimize machine settings in real time based on material variations. Some manufacturers are experimenting with carbon curing, injecting carbon dioxide into fresh blocks to accelerate strength development while permanently sequestering CO2 from the atmosphere. Others are developing blocks with integrated insulation or specialized surface finishes that eliminate the need for additional materials during construction. The global concrete block industry faces challenges and opportunities. In developing countries, construction booms drive massive demand for blocks, but infrastructure limitations and skilled labor shortages constrain production capacity. In developed countries, demand is stable, but labor costs and environmental regulations pressure manufacturers to automate and improve efficiency. Natural disasters increasingly drive demand for concrete construction due to its superior resistance to hurricanes, earthquakes, and fires compared to wood framing. But competition from alternative materials, particularly insulated concrete forms and prefabricated wall panels, forces traditional block manufacturers to innovate or risk market share losses. So here's the complete picture of how billions of concrete blocks are made inside massive production lines. Raw materials, cement, aggregate, water, and additives are precisely weighed and mixed into zero-slump concrete with consistency measured in grams. The concrete feeds into block machines that compress and vibrate the material under 40 to 60 tons of pressure, forming blocks in 6 to 8 second cycles that produce 20,000 blocks per hour. Fresh blocks cure for hours to weeks depending on the method used, developing compressive strength through chemical reactions between cement and water. Automated pallet handling systems move thousands of pallets through production, curing, and packaging without human touch. Quality control testing at every stage ensures dimensional accuracy within one eighth inch and strength meeting minimum standards, with reject rates kept below 3% through constant monitoring and adjustment. The scale is massive. Plants producing 40 million blocks annually, consuming thousands of tons of materials, and requiring millions in capital investment for automated equipment that runs continuously to achieve the volume needed for profitability. The process combines precise chemistry, extreme mechanical force, sophisticated automation, and rigorous quality control to produce a product that seems simple, but is actually the result of decades of engineering refinement. Every block stacked into every wall required exact material ratios, perfect mixing, extreme compression, controlled curing, and multiple quality checks. The blocks supporting the building you're sitting in right now went through this entire process, along with billions of identical blocks produced in facilities operating around the world 24 hours per day. The concrete block industry operates mostly invisibly, but it's one of the foundations of modern construction, literally providing the building blocks that create the infrastructure of civilization.